Hello, chemistry fans. We're going to do a little burette work today. Here we have a burette stand with two burettes in it. One of them has been stored properly, and one of them has been stored improperly. The difference in these two burettes is the placement of the stopcock. This one is closed. The last liquid that was used in the burette is trapped in the tip. This one is open. Notice the vertical orientation of the valve. We want to leave it like this, not this. The solvent inside this tip will evaporate over time and the crystals of whatever solution we made up will clog up the tip rendering this inoperative. So we do not want to leave it in this condition. Leave it instead in this condition. If you want to do some burette work, then the very first thing to do is to move the burette stand close to the edge of the bench where it can be reached easily. Watch what happens as Dr. Smithart opens the tip. The trapped liquid is now released, so you probably want to clean this and the tip before you use it. So we have a rather dirty burette here that we need to clean. You should always assume, unless you know otherwise, that the burette is dirty. And we need to remove whatever is inside. Here Dr. Smithart is using a burette with some red food coloring in it for demonstration purposes. The first step in cleaning the burette is to get a squeeze bottle with some distilled water and add a few milliliters of water while twisting so that you can rinse the inside of the burette. Next, we want to let that water flow through the tip. If you want, you can shake it up and down a little bit. Make sure any kind of particles get taken out of there. Here he lets it drain for a minute. Now he's going to start rinsing it again with the tip open. You want to make sure that the burette is well drained and clean. So we want to continue flushing the burette with the distilled water. Let it completely drain out the tip. If you want to, you can close the tip of the burette, reverse it, and let it drain out the other end too. Through a combination of these actions, we want to completely clean the dirty burette. Shake it up and down if you need to, and make sure that the tip is draining well. This one is draining well. The burette tip does tend to clog, especially if you don't clean it before you put it away. You only need a few milliliters of water to do this. You don't need to completely fill the burette. This burette is beginning to drain well. You should clean a burette like this at least three times. Next, we want to rinse the burette with the titrant. In this case, we're going to use a green solution to represent the titrant, the solution in the burette during the titration. Of course, when filling the burette, we want the tip closed. Also, you may wish to use a funnel. Note that there is still water in the tip of the burette and in the burette itself. Therefore, we need to run the solution through the tip of the burette and continue to rinse the burette itself with the titrant. You 
You may wish to do this two or three times. All you need is a couple of milliliters to rinse the burette. This will prevent us from introducing an error into the titration due to water in the burette. Finally, we want to fill the burette with our titrant. This is the way that we properly clean our burette and prepare it for our titration. Now it is time to make a volumetric measurement using our burette. First, you must make an initial reading. Let's look at the burette. What is the initial reading? Notice that Dr. Smithart points to this. Right about where Dr. Smithart's finger is, you will see a 29. And then there is a 30. So we know that the reading is somewhere between 29 and 30 milliliters. This device reads a little oddly, so we have to be careful here. It is more than 29, but less than 30. It's actually a little more than 29.5. It looks like this is 29.5, 6, 7, and even a little past 29.7. So 0.7 is the last significant digit that we can read directly from the burette. But we can read it more accurately than this. In fact, we can read the burette to the hundredth position. So what we want to do is to estimate how far is it between the last two gradations on the burette. It appears that it's two tenths of the way between 29.7 and 29.8. So the reading is 29.72 milliliters. Now suppose that we are doing a titration. We can open the stopcock and release some of the liquid into the receiving flask here. So now, what is the new reading on the burette? As you can see, we are a little beyond 31.0 milliliters, but not yet to 31.1. Estimating the fourth digit, we arrive at our final burette reading, which is 31.02 milliliters.